Hi everyone. We are ready for today's read aloud, and today's um, book is called A Tale of Two Beasts. Before we start the reading, I just wanted to ask if there was ever a time where you felt like that people had different reactions. Was there a time? Um, because I was thinking there was one day last week this team wanted to visit me, but I was sick. And she thought I didn't want her to come over, but actually I just wanted to protect her from getting germs. So there was a situation where it was the same thing. We, it was the same event, but we had very understanding of what was happening. And as we read the book today, we're going to find out if there's a situation like that. In so we're going to go ahead and start the story. Welcome to Storyline Online, brought to you by the SAG AFTRA Foundation. I'm Sarah Silver. Oh, I forgot to ask. Remember to bring your paper and a pen or a pencil for your interactive read aloud because you're going to be drawing and writing down sentences um, just like we did yesterday. And today I'm going to read A Tale of Two Beasts, written and illustrated by Fiona Robertson. I was walking home from Grandma's house through the deep, dark woods when I spied a strange little beast. Feet, 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 feet. He was stuck up a tree and whining sadly, so I decided to rescue him. Feet. We're gonna stop and act real quick. If you were the girl, how would you react with your facial expression or your body? How would you react if you saw a strange little creature in the in the woods? I see Miss Kim, Miss Rosales, Miss Valencia, and Miss Kimoch have very different reactions, like a surprised feeling, maybe a shocked feeling. Really good responses. I hope boys and girls, you at home are also acting out what you would, how you would react if you saw a strange. Let's continue. Beep. I will call you Fang. I told him, and I wrapped him warmly up in my scarf and carried him safely home. I gave him a lovely bath and a gorgeous new hat and sweater and a delicious bowl of fresh nuts. I made him a beautiful house and gave him Lord Rex to play with. Lord Rex is her stuffed, uh, stuffed lion, it looks like. I took him out for lots of long walkies to keep him fit and healthy. And I showed him off to all of my friends who loved him nearly as much as I did. Mm, amazing! Awesome! He's so cute! But for I want to pause right here and we're going to do a stop and draw. So I'm going to show you how you might draw on your white paper right now. So I want you to draw two pink clouds. This might be the little girl's feeling, and then this might be Fang's feeling. So I want you to draw an emoji for each character in this moment. How is the girl feeling in this moment? And how is Fang feeling in this moment? And teachers, you can share your drawings when you're ready. So this might be the girls. Boys and girls, feel free to pause the video if you need to take some time to draw your emojis. Looks like Miss Akima, which is ready. Do you want to share with us first? Ooh, can you explain your emojis? Ooh, I don't think we can hear you, Miss. Sorry. It's 
So I think the little girl is very happy because she has a new friend and a cute friend that she can play with. Um, I know when I find cute animals, I'm very happy. But I think that um, Fang might be a little or very upset because he's in a new place. He might not know where he is. He might be frightened. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love how she's giving us evidence from the text. Certain events in the story give us information of how our characters might be feeling. Does anyone else want to share what they drew? I, oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Rosales, can you explain what you drew? <clears throat> I drew the same reaction. <laughs> um, she's surprised in a loving way, mm. and he's surprised in a get away from me way. Mm. <clears throat> I love that you mentioned surprise in different situations, because there can be good surprises and some bad surprises. <clears throat> Ms. Kim, would you like to share your drawing? Yeah, so I decided to add some dialogue. Um, the girl is saying, I feel so happy. And, her <laughs> mom, and then Fang is saying, I feel so uncomfortable. And the reason why I think Fang might be feeling uncomfortable is he's not used to this kind of setting and this kind of routine. So it's placed in a situation where um, he might be feeling uncomfortable and out of place. Do you want to share your drawing, Ms. Valencia? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> um, I, can you see? I feel like she's just so thrilled and, and she feels like everything she's doing for Fang is the word she used, like lovely and gorgeous and beautiful. She feels like all these things are a real treat. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I feel like he just doesn't know what to make of it yet. And he's just in this very weird situation where he is questioning everything. Yeah. And I love how you mentioned that she thinks that she's being loving but actually how he's interpreting it isn't very loving. He's very confused and he doesn't have the same response that she might have. So let's continue to see what happens next. For some strange reason, the little beast did not look very happy. In fact, he was looking rather hot. I hope he's not sick, I thought, and I opened a window to cool him down. But then something terrible happened. He threw off his clothes, leapt out of the window, and ran away as fast as he could back to the deep, dark woods. Ooh, we're going to stop and jot right here and think, let's add some dialogue to this part of the story. What do you think he said as he jumped out the window? So I'm going to show you on the whiteboard. If you can see that you know. um, You can add sound effects, you can add a dialogue, up to you. What do you think he might have said in this part of the story? And then teachers, when you're ready, I'll write your responses on the whiteboard. Rosales, you want to start us off? What do you think Fang said? I'm free again. Nice. Awesome. I love how you're using the events in the story to give you evidence to support why he would say that. He's probably really excited to be free. I said the similar thing. I said, yay, I am finally free. <laughs> I love how we're using a lot of exclamation points because that tells us that he's really excited. Any other thoughts? I pretty much said the same thing. Yippee! I'm free! I'm free. Awesome. I said the same thing. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. So many ways to show excitement. We have sound effects, we have exclamation points. Okay, let's go back to our story. 
Okay. I wanted to go look for him, but Mama had other plans. Dinner time. Ugh. Bath time. Ugh. Bed time. Ugh. I couldn't sleep. I missed the little beast, and I wondered if I'd ever see him again. But then, a small furry shadow appeared at the foot of my bed. The strange little beast had returned. He seemed quite pleased to see me. And I began to think that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't that strange after all. I wonder why he came back. I wonder the same thing. Let's go ahead and stop and think to ourselves, why do you think he came back? We might use the sentence frame, I think he came back because. <clears throat> so boys and girls at home, you can pause the video and turn to talk. To somebody about why you think he came back and teachers when you're ready you can give me a thumbs up and you can share some responses of why you guys think he came back Ms. Kim Witch, do you want to start us off uh -oh. we have to unmute you again ah. so okay. I think I think he came back because he missed the girl. <laughs> I, so you guys might say, I think he came back because he missed the girl. Okay, let's continue. Oh, yes, Mr. Alice? I did something similar. Oh, because he missed belonging to someone what do you mean by belonging um that he was able to be with someone and share uh, an experience with him with her yeah. awesome let's go ahead and go back to the story and see if you find out two beasts part two the and that's so great that this story actually had two parts. And then the other, oh, I guess, Bang's perspective as well. So we get to hear both sides of the story. Tra la la, tra la 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 la. Hanging from my favorite tree. Singing happily to the birds. Wow. Hey! I was ambushed by a terrible beast. Now that you know the girl's perspective and Fang's perspective, you can go ahead and change or clarify it. Because good readers, sometimes when we get more information, we might change our thinking. Because that's what good readers do. So 
So go ahead. If it's a, if you feel like yours is correct, you can always keep it the same. But if you want to add to your thing, go ahead. Oh, Currently, users just all um, show up our pictures at the same time when you're ready. And if any teachers, if you feel like anything changed, go ahead and share with us what you think changed. So for me, Fang, instead of being mad, he was like disgusted or annoyed. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't just being uncomfortable. He was actually very angry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? I agree with what Miss Kim said. I felt like he really had feelings of anger at this point. So I just went ahead and changed it that he was just angry at the situation. But at the end, <laughs> crying change. Okay, so. Boys and girls, remember that when we read stories, sometimes when we get more information, it's really important for us to reflect and change our thinking because we got some new information. Because he wasn't just confused, he was getting to the point where he was annoyed or frustrated. So let's finish the rest of the story. The deep dark woods, one mile. Free once more. I raced back to the deep dark woods before the terrible beast could catch me. Scratch, scratch. It was peaceful in the deep, dark woods. A bit too peaceful, perhaps. Silence. And also, a bit wet. In weather like this, uh, one could do with a nice warm hat. I snuck back to retrieve it under cover of darkness. The terrible beast was waiting for me. She seemed quite pleased to see me. And I began to think that maybe, just maybe, she wasn't that terrible after all. The end. I love this book. I chose to read this book because Everybody has a different way of seeing the same thing. And that's how it is in life with everything. The way you see something is completely different than the way your friend sees something or your mom sees something. And to get to see both characters' point of view is cool. Awesome. And so our last activity is we're going to do a stop and act. So I notice that sometimes in stories, characters change from the beginning to the end. And one of those characters I felt that changed was Fang. So let's go ahead and act really quickly and we can change our facial expressions. Some people like to do it where they put the paper up like this and show us how they felt like this in the beginning and then how did it change at the end. <clears throat> so in the beginning, how did Fang feel in the beginning of this story? And then how did Fang feel at the end of this story? So I and then show us the end. <laughs> so at home, you can do the same thing. Show us how you felt, how Fang felt in the beginning and the end of the story. Awesome. So we'll post some extension questions. Wow, Miss Kim, we're really loving this. Um, you can just like. We're gonna have some extension questions. So there's two extension questions you can ask yourself at the end as you reflect on this book. How can we, or, um, yes, how can we clarify misunderstandings in our own lives? I feel like Fang and the girl could have had a 
conversation about how they could have understood each other's feelings better. And how does that relate to, you know, when we're at school, when we problem solve, and for our peacekeepers at 24th Street, how do we um, have conversations with each other to clarify how we feel about something and how another person might feel about something? So we hope that you're going to go back and read this story. And um, please comment below about your thoughts about the read aloud. Thank you. Bye. That's a wrap. <laughs> a wrap.